there's a nice ring around the Earth. It's superconductive because you're in the matrix itself. It's one electron balanced by a positron. The sun above your head has to drip its men's true all blood into the holy grail at the center of the dish or there's no aurora borealis coming out. So you're in hell. That's Helios above your head up there, people. You have a double helix. You say, hello. You know, how's your health? You need any help? It's because you're in hell and you need to get to the center of the dish before you're dead. Drink from the living waters and uh, pass into the land of perpetual twilight, the Garden of Eden. It's just that simple. You don't have to like it. Every compass is pointing to the very center of the flat earth plane where you get eternal life and your way out of the matrix. And everybody only focuses on total shit and lies, the space station and all that. It's all fake. Everything's fake. There's a dome up there. The earth is not floating through space. It's an accident. You're not made from monkeys. Everything you think you know to be true is the reverse of truth. The devil already has your soul in the Vatican and your parents gave it up willingly. Now you're lost at sea. You're officially dead. By legal definition, you're a monster with no inheritable blood. You don't have to like it, but you're living the game agony right now. So when you unfold your cube, you see it turns into a cross. And I'm telling you that every compass is pointing to the center of this flat earth plane where the aurora borealis is coming out, hitting the parabolic mirror and showering down at you like the matrix code. Every compass is a sphere of destiny. I'm explaining it to you. You don't have to like it. But I'm going to scream this out from the top of my lungs over and over and over and over because I have the sphere of destiny. As some of you may already know, we live on a flat plain. Mountains and plateaus are actually the stumps of ancient trees that were cut down, and the moon, our chakras, and kundalini are unnatural energetic implants. Basically, everything we know is a complete lie. Those in power, however, have clearly shown us the way out of this insane matrix through symbols and vocabulary. The Christmas tree is the ultimate symbol for the way out of this matrix. Christians put an X on the bottom and place a green tree on top. Then they place ornaments spiraling around the tree. At the center of this flat plain once grew the tree of life. This tree extended out and at one point covered the earth. All of the giant trees were connected and in part powered by the Aurora Borealis. The Aurora Borealis is a powerful green light that's now instead shooting out from the center of the plane where the tree of life is no longer standing. The sun moves inward and outwards, bringing the seasons. The Christmas tree represents the astral light, the ornaments represent the sun, and the X is marking the spot of the hole at the center of the plane. The way out is through this opening. When we jump through it, we are pulled through dimensions and are placed back in our original bodies, leaving this part of the flat plane which is hexed in energetic confines and deception. Look at a compass. The north needle points towards this hole. This is why it's marked red or with an arrow. Broken down, the word compass sounds like come pass. This is not a mistake. They are hiding in plain sight the instructions to the way out. The X on the bottom of the Christmas tree symbolizes the hole. This is why we say X marks the spot. Take a look at an exit sign. E, as we know, stands for everyone. We then have the letter X and the word it. Everyone, the X is it. The X is the exit. It's all in plain sight. The vowels are a jigsaw puzzle explaining this. Our vowels are A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. If you take the E and turn it 90 degrees to the left, it turns into a W. Place it at the beginning. If you put the Y at the end, that spells way. The I remains stationary because it symbolizes the astral light shooting out of the hole. Add a T on the right hand side and you get the phrase way out. I'll explain more in future videos. Okay, so let's get back to the sun. The arc shape symbolizes the sun's passing into this hole. We already know that the story of Jesus is an allegory for the sun's movement. The candy cane, said to stand for Jesus, represents this arc shape. When you put letters from the word go on top of each other, the sun's arc into the hole becomes clear. I'll also mention that green on traffic lights is go, representing the green astral light. The question mark is a representation of this as well. The dot represents the black sun, but I'll get into that and more symbols in a separate video. We're just reviewing basics. This goes deep. Pin the tail on the donkey reveals these same concepts. We use an X attached to an arc. You get what I'm saying. The bullseye used in darts and archery is yet another symbol of this exit hole. The center of our flat plane, like the bullseye, is the desired spot that we must hit. 
Many airplane pilots over the years have come out about a huge hole where the North Pole should be. The North Pole is forbidden to fly over, and all pilots know this. So hidden in plain sight is the name of the game. Our controllers have been telling us, and because we've been indoctrinated with a very faulty worldview, we keep missing the signs. I'll be explaining more about this topic in the future. It's the most important truth that we can know. Remember guys, shed your blood over your divine intent, start sun gazing and reconnecting with Earth's energy via grounding mats or barefoot walking, and always remember, we are divine beings at the core, and no amount of deception can change this. So until next time, love you all, peace. Hey, thanks for joining me, hope you're doing well. In 1885, William Warren, the first president of Boston University, published his work Paradise Found, The Cradle of the Human Race at the North Pole. In the book, he recites scientific explanations and ancient cosmology that all point to the same conclusion. Paradise is located at the North Pole. Warren points to the Garden of Eden at the North Pole, as well as Atlantis, Mount Meru, Avalon, and Hyperborea. Hyperborea, the ancient Greek paradise, Broken down means beyond the aurora borealis. This emerald colored light shoots out of the center of our plane, where there is a vortex leading into this long lost paradise. In his book, Warren mentions the night skies of Eden, showing an early depiction of the aurora borealis. And over the years, many have suggested that Hyperborea was the original Garden of Eden. So Hyperborea, Eden, Avalon, Agartha, Shambhala, these are all different names that have been given over the years to the same paradise. Warren calls the North Pole the navel of the Earth, and like I've been saying, all compasses point north to this paradise, urging us to come pass into Earth's center, Earth's navel. He discusses the tree of life and its relation to this paradise. According to Genesis, at the center of the Garden of Eden stood a majestic tree. Its fruit was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired. Similarly, many ancient cultures associated a tree of life, or world tree, with the center of the world, locating this tree at the true North Pole. The world tree is typically said to be a massive tree, extending high above the clouds with its roots deep in the underworld. We have Valagfa in Hungarian mythology, Yggdrasil in Norse mythology, the Ashvata in Hindu mythology, the Kianmu in Chinese mythology, the Mayan world tree, and there's many more. Warren writes, where stood this tree was at once the source of all other trees and the giver of immortality. Through the center vortex is paradise. It's the holy grail in which when we drink from, we achieve everlasting life. Like Warren says, immortality. The world tree was real. Its roots extended up from the underbelly of our flat earth and this organism spread out across our plane. This was an interconnected organism made up of giant trees. Most of what we call mountains and plateaus are the stumps of these trees. They, along with the tree of life, were cut down. And this truth is revealed to us in James Cameron's avatar. The main tree of souls is said to be the closest connection to Ewa. Ewa in Avatar is the guiding force and deity of Pandora. The natives believe that Ewa acts to keep the ecosystem of Pandora in perfect equilibrium, but the tree of souls which connects to this deity is cut down, just like our tree of life was. Ewa refers to our connection with Mother Earth, Gaia, the divine feminine goddess. This is clear because Ewa comes from the Celtic word Dewa, meaning goddess. Once the tree of life and the other interconnected trees were cut down, our connection to this goddess diminished and the spiritual and physical equilibrium of this plane drastically shifted. Both sides of Flat Earth used to be paradise, but by cutting down this tree and therefore our ties with the Divine Mother, along with many other events that occurred around the same time period, this side of our Flat Earth became a cradle for archonic and reptilian influence. This majestic organism isn't dead, however. It is still well and alive past the center vortex. Warren writes, Every indication points us to the Northern Pole. It was in Aaron Vej, the Persian Eden. He claims in Aaron Vej there was said to be a sacred mountain. This is Mount Meru. Like I said, mountains are giant tree stumps. So Mount Meru, the magnetic mountain which is depicted all throughout ancient cosmology, is actually what's left of the Tree of Life. In this map made by the 14th century explorer Gerhard Mercator, there is an iron mountain at the middle called Mount Rups Nigra at the North Pole, with four rivers extending outwards. The tides on Flat Earth are not caused by the moon, 
but by these four rivers that diverge from Mount Meru. They breathe in and out, causing the tides. Eden was also said 